10-minute scan could detect and cure high blood pressure. Vietnam president quits as party intensifies graft crackdown. Scientists uncover why chocolate feels so good. Europeans say their standards of living have already declined. Miss USA R. Bonnie Gabriel wins Miss Universe competition. Kabul's mannequins are hooded and masked under Taliban rules. Europe's highest ranked universities. Swedish government to get rid of dancing permits. Hello, I'm Wade Lee. Thank you for joining us on Fun Day News. It is Wednesday, January 18th, and here are your top stories. A new type of CT scan could make way for the most common cause of high blood pressure to be detected and cured. The scan found that in two-thirds of hypertension patients with increased level of the hormone results in a benign growth in just one of the adrenaline glands, which can be safely removed after being detected. Professor Morris Brown, co-author of the study at Queen's Mary University of London, said, Until now, 99% are never diagnosed because of the difficulty and unavailability of tests. Hopefully, this is about to change. A 10-minute blood pressure scan could cure the condition for some sufferers. The scan uses a very short-acting dose of a radioactive dye that only sticks to the nodule that produces the hormone. The nodules glow shortly after an injection is given and highlight an obvious cause for the condition. Professor Brown said when they glow for a few minutes after our injection, they are revealed as the obvious cause of hypertension, which can often then be cured. According to the study, 1 in 20 people with high blood pressure have these nodules. The Vietnamese government said on Tuesday that President Nguyen San Phu has resigned after the ruling Communist Party blamed him for violation and wrongdoing by officials under his control. Vietnam has been rife with speculation he would be removed following January's dismissal of two deputy prime ministers who served under him, as the party doubled down on a blazing furnace anti-corruption drive led by its powerful long-serving chief, Nguyen Phu Trong. A state news agency, VNA, says Mr. Fook has submitted his resignation. VNM has no paramount ruler and is officially led by four pillars. The party's secretary, the president, prime minister and speaker of the house. The VNM Miss government said Gu Yang Shen Fook was responsible for offenses committed by many officials, including two deputy prime ministers and three ministers. His resignation requires approval from the legislature, which sources on Monday said would hold a rare extraordinary meeting this week, adding to expectation that Gu Yang Shen Fuq's fate had been sealed. According to a new study published in ACS, Applied Material and Interfaces, a team of experts at the University of Leeds in the UK found that the secret to why chocolate is so irresistible, a unique fatty film coating its heart center, which makes many of us feel like we're almost addicted. The researcher analyzed the process that takes place when we eat chocolate, focusing on texture rather than taste and the divine smell. Mars became a tough competitor. The owner of M&M and Snickers forced Hershey to finally create a marketing department in the 1960s. They found that the fat contained in chocolate plays a key function almost as soon as it comes into contact with a ton, something the experts call the chocolate sensation. After it melts in the mouth, solid cocoa particles are released, and they are also important to the tactile sensation. Professor Anwes Shasakar, who leads the team, said it is the location of the fat in the makeup of the chocolate which matters in each stage of lubrication, and that has been rarely researched. According to a new Eurobarometer, the cost of living crisis triggered by the Ukraine war, the energy crunch, surging inflation and the coronavirus pandemic has become the greatest worry for European Union citizens. The real barometer shows 45% of respondents are currently having some or a lot of difficulties with their personal income. Additionally, 46% of Europeans admit their standards of living have already decreased as a result of the mounting crisis, while 39% expect to see a decrease sometime this year. The cost of living crisis is clearly beginning to bite. The countries where the perceived drop in living standards has been most pronounced are Cyprus, where 70% of respondents say standards have already been reduced. Greece is 66%, Malta 65%, France 62% and Portugal 57%. 
People in Nordic countries are the most comfortable with their present income, with 87% in Sweden, 86% in Denmark, and 84% in Finland, while only 21% in Greece and Bulgaria are satisfied with their earnings. More worryingly, 30% of respondents admit they struggle to pay their monthly bills from time to time. The first Filipino American to win Miss USA, R. Bonnie Gabriel, a fashion designer, model, and sewing instructor from Texas, was crowned Miss Universe last Saturday night. According to Miss Universe, Gabriel is a former high school volleyball player and graduate of the University of North Texas. A short bio posted on the organization's website said she's also CEO of her own sustainable clothing line. Organizers said nearly 90 contestants from around the world took part in the competition. In the QA at the last stage of the competition, Gabrielle was asked how she would work to demonstrate Miss Universe is an empowering and progressive organization if she were to win. She responded, I would use it to be a transformational leader, citing her work using recycled materials in her fashion design and teaching sewing to survivors of human trafficking and domestic violence. She said, it is so important to invest in others, invest in our community, and use your unique talent to make a difference. Under the Taliban, the mannequins in women's dress shop across the Afghan capital of Kabul are a haunting sight. Their heads cloaked in cloth sacks or wrapped in black plastic bags. The hooded mannequins are one symbol of the Taliban's puritanical rule over Afghanistan. But in a way, they are also a small show of resistance and creativity by Kabul's dress merchants. Initially, the Taliban wanted the mannequins to be outright beheaded. According to local media, the Taliban Ministry of Vice and Virtue decreed that all mannequins must be removed from shop windows or their heads taken off. Shop owners then had to balance between obeying the Taliban and trying to attract customers. The variety of solutions they came up with are on display on Lisi Merriam Street dress shops in Kabul. The store windows and showrooms are lined with mannequins in evening gowns and dresses bursting with color and decoration and all in various types of head coverings. According to the Times, Higher Education's World University Ranking Report, 36 of the top 100 universities are in Europe in 2023. Despite its impressive ranking, 2023 has not been Europe's best performance since the list was first published 12 years ago. In 2016, European countries had 42 universities in the global top 100 list, apart from three British universities, namely the University of Oxford, University of Cambridge, and the Imperial College London. Only ETH Zurich of Switzerland has ranked in the top 10 in the last 13 years. In the 2023 Times rankings, 15 European universities ranked among the world's top 50 institutions, and 36 were in the top 100. Apart from Oxford, Cambridge, ICL, and ETH Zurich, these include University College London 22, the University of Edinburgh 29, Technical University of Munich 30, LMU Munich 33, King's College London 35, the London School of Economics and Political Science 37, and the Eco Polytechnic Federal de Lausanne 41, KU Louvain 42, Heidelberg University 43, Paris Sciences et Letters PSL Research University 47, and the Karolinska Institute 49. Sweden's center-right coalition government wants to cut red tape when it comes to dancing by abolishing a decade-old requirement for restaurants, nightclubs and other venues to obtain permits before they let patrons shimmy and sway. The proposal made last Thursday means that venues no longer would need a license to organize dances. Instead, as a general rule, they would only have to register with the police, which can be done verbally and does not cost anything. Currently, applying for a permit incurs a fee of at least 700 kroner, $67 for the establishment. As it is now, owners can lose their liquor and business licenses if police officers come by and find out that a venue did not have authorization to let patrons dance. The government proposed having the change take effect on July 1st, although it requires parliamentary approval. Justice Minister Gunnar Stroner said in a government statement, By removing the requirement for a dance permit, we also reduce bureaucracy. 
Fun and News will help sharpen your English skill while keeping you informed on current international events. Tune into our other Fun Day programs to learn more about the world's most important topics in English. Click the link below now to join Fun Day for free. I'm Wade Lee, your host. I'll see you next time.